Demetrius Johnson taking on Henry Cejudo. And I've got a couple of thoughts. First off, what in the hell's going on there? TJ Dillashaw challenged Demetrius Johnson. Dana White said he wanted to make the fight. UFC fans in the media said they wanted to see the fight. Now they're fighting on the same night, but they're not fighting against each other. I got a question there. In fact, I got a problem with that. I don't I don't get that. I don't get that. That's not my call to make. It's up to Demetrius, but I do I just think it's a very peculiar decision to be fighting on a card underneath so the co main event of a guy who called you out publicly. On the same night in the same town. One intro apart. I think that's a peculiar move. Not one that I would have made. I also look at that fight. And you guys, I'm very hard on Henry Cejudo over here, but I swear to goodness it comes from a good place. I swear I'm hard on him because I care. Believe that or not. I swear I'm hard on him because I'm care. But we have done an entire entire show on the fact that Henry Cejudo wants to continue to come out and be the nice guy. But in that division, the nice guy role is taken by Demetrius, who's a genuinely kind person and happens to be the champion. And anytime there's a championship fight, he is going to be in it. So the passenger seat and the co-starring role is the only one open. Henry got it. He finally came out and he called out Demetrius publicly and he laid out his case. And it wasn't great and it wasn't compelling and it wasn't needle moving, but it was enough in a quiet division to get himself the fight. I worry that Henry does not understand that the little bit of barking he did got him the contract that he wanted. But with the signing of that contract comes an unspoken responsibility. I don't think he's going to take that responsibility. I think he's going to look at this purely as a competitor. I got the match I want. I'm going to buckle down and I'm going to go train. I think the next time we see Henry Cejudo in an interview, we're going to see a smile. We're going to hear about the Mexican and the American flag. And we're going to hear about growing up in L.A. with his mom. That's who Henry is. It's very real and it's very authentic. So's the fight game. And flags and smiles and a guy's mom never sold tickets to a pay-per-view to watch a cage fight. If I was Henry and I was fighting Demetrius for a world championship, a record setting in Demetrius' case, he already has the record. He's going out there to try to get his own record for title defenses, trying to go beat himself. In a rematch, which historically in the sport, rematches do very well. So do world title fights for that matter. You have both of them, and you have been demoted to a co-main event. I would look at that very, very carefully. I would not sit back with my team and my coaches and my managers and go, wow, we sent out a few tweets. We roughed him up a little bit and we lured him in. Ha-ha, good for us. I would look at that and say, I have been demoted. This is a rematch. I've already done this match one time. I was on top of the bill. I am now not doing the exact same thing against the exact same guy in the exact same sport that has always favored rematches. I have been demoted. And I worry that he doesn't know enough about this business to realize that that's happening around him. I worry about that. This sport's in a very interesting time. We've talked about this very clearly and eloquently as it pertains to Chris Cyborg and the 145-pound division. If you want to fight for a world championship, you want to compete for a world championship in sport and you're a 145-pound female, All you have to do is raise your hand and say, I want that fight. That's it. There is no other qualifications that you need. 
If you can fog a mirror and you have a willingness, you are now the number one contender. That's very, very rare. But it's not unprecedented. It used to be that way with Mike Tyson as well. If you remember how scary he was in the 80s, you remember that nobody spoke his name. Nobody called out Iron Mike. It was usually by accident. Some reporter would put a camera and a microphone in some guy's face, try to get him to take the bait. But if he would take it, he would be in there with Mike. And most of the boxers just said, man, I don't want it that bad. I really don't want to do it. So it's not unprecedented, and that's where we're at in the sport as it pertains to 145 pounds women's division. That is not a knock on the sport. It's just a reality of where we're at. It's just a reality of somebody who has a mystique around them, has an incredible skill set, and that people are very scared of. But you're now starting to see that in other divisions. I would suggest for you that 135 pounds, why not, is clear cut. It's not as simple as just raising your hand and put me in. But there's also not an extremely crowded division with five and six athletes arguing to be the top spot. You've got Cody, you've got TJ, and you've got Dominic. But they've all fought each other, and now they're starting to run through the gauntlet again. I think 125 pounds is largely that way. I think for as credible, as incredible of a fighter as Demetrius Johnson is, that co-pilot position has been a bit of musical chairs. Henry Cejudo got the fight by going to social media and asking for the fight. It didn't go viral. It wasn't some crazy amount of numbers of people that wanted to see it. As a matter of fact, they gave him the fight, and then they put him in a co-main spot, which means it, 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 this isn't some wonderful position, but that's how easily he got it. I think you gotta, you got to really pay attention to that. You look at 185 pounds, it's a mess in a good way. I mean, you got some hammers out there. And this Kelvin Gaslam, Chris Weidman debacle, what are you going to do there? Gaslam got all these wins. Gaslam was said he's going to be the number one contender. Weidman's on ice. Weidman comes back. Weidman's got a win over Gaslam. I mean, what do you what do you do there? Just ignore him. They're both compelling arguments. It's going to come down to who do the fans want to see. But ultimately, it comes down to that in every single division at every single time. Who do the fans want to see? And then every now and then to keep the integrity of the business, nah, we got to go off the rankings. Uh, this guy's won eight or nine in a row. We can't deny him anymore. The media's starting to speak up. we got to do this thing right. That's not unprecedented. That's the way that it goes. You guys remember Senator Ted Kennedy? Way back when was this, early 80s? Late 70s? I think it was early 80s came out and said, if Marvin Hagler does not get a championship fight, we are going to do a congressional investigation. And Bob Arum said that Marvin Hagler is fighting for the title. It is not unprecedented that a guy gets overlooked at times. And that you got to go look at the rankings. It's also not unprecedented that whoever speaks up the most and can get the mandate of the masses trumps everybody else. I'm not preaching to you anything new. These are old rules, but some of the new guys haven't yet observed them. And I'm so hard on Henry. I really do owe Henry a bit of an apology. I don't need to come on here and be a dick to him all the time. I just watch a guy that is so damn talented. He's handsome. He's young. He's decorated. He's all, he just all check off in every single box what you want. And he misses this one, this one piece. He doesn't seem to know his role. He doesn't seem to know his responsibility. He doesn't seem to know that rematches are great for business as are world title fights, and he's in that spot demoted to a co-main event. I think he's sitting back thinking, well, this is a pretty cool spot. When I'm done, I can shower up and grab a nacho and a Coke and go sit in the audience and watch Garbrandt and Dillashaw go at it. This is pretty fun. He's not wrong on those things. There's just a responsibility, and I want him to do even better. I want him to understand his responsibility. And someday I don't want to have to see him and give him an apology. I want it to be the opposite. I want to see him, and he walks up to me and says, Chael, son, and thank you so much. Boy, did you ever have that right. 